Hello everyone, my name is Daria and welcome to my channel! After a wonderful holiday in Madrid, we went to an equally amazing place, the island of Malta. I would describe this island as a modern Middle Ages, because there are a lot of ancient buildings everywhere, as well as the numerous monuments that reminisce the endless wars that took place in Malta in the past. Here you can feel the spirit of knighthood, unity and faith in a bright future. Native people speak Maltese, a language of Semitic origin written in the Latin script, but most of the population speak English. Italian is also widely spoken due to its close location to the Italian island Sicily. The most popular place is obviously the capital of Malta, Valletta. I'd like to mention that Valletta is the main transportation hub of Malta, because you can get to any corner of the country using buses that regularly go off from the central bus station located right on front of the city gate. Single bus tickets cost 1.5 euro per person during the winter season and 2 euro in the summertime. It's valid for 2 hours and you can make an unlimited number of transfers within this period. Near Valletta there is a small town called Falariana, from where I would like to start talking about our journey. Floriana includes such attractions like the small garden, monuments to Christ the King, as well as a beautiful Triton fountain. And now we go to Valletta. Exploring the capital usually begins from the city gate. In the past, it used to be the only land way out to the island from Valletta. Not far from the main city gate to Valletta are the ruins of the Royal Opera House, built in the late 19th century during British rules on the island. Until that moment, then during the Second World War, that building was destroyed. Nearby is located the new Parliament building. There is a statue of Jean de Valletta on the square next to the Destroy Opera House. After the Great Siege, he commissioned the construction of the new city of Valletta in 1566, laying the first stone with his our hands. The city was named after him. And also in this area you can find the Paul Boffa monument and the Auberge de Castille. Nowadays it serves as the Prime Minister's office. Walking through all of these attractions, we got to the Upper Baraka Garden with an amazing panoramic view of the Grand Harbor. On the lower level of the garden, there is a saluting battery which fires cannons twice a day. Going back deep into the city, you can see the St. John's Cathedral, the coast of Justice Building and many beautiful streets around. And now we are at the Lava Baraka Gardens. This garden hosts the monument of Vice Admiral Sir Alexander John Ball and the monument Inia di Uga Atardi, Italian painter and sculptor Uga Atardi. Across the road from the garden, we recommend you to take a look at the Siege Bell War Memorial, built in honor of all those who died during the Second World War. From here you can enjoy the incredible panoramic views. By the end of the day, we had explored the whole of Valletta city. 
on the other end of the city we observed another attraction, St. Paul's Cathedral and nearby the Dan Mikhail Carey Monument. Dan Mikhail Carey was involved in an unsuccessful revolt to overthrow French rules under Napoleon Bonaparte, for which he, together with other locals, was executed in 1799. The next day, my husband and I went to the fishing village Marsa Shlok. One of the popular attractions of this village are the gorgeous, brightly colored fishing boats with eyes on them. There is also a cute fisherman monument here. All this is cut mainly in this part of the island, so sometimes you can buy fresh fish here or enjoy ready-made fish in local taverns. Nearby is a small church of Our Lady of Pompeii. Then we did a really heroic step. We walked to St. Peter's Pool. It's hiking. The water here is crystal clear, but cold enough for the beginning of May. However, some hardy people had already jumped into the water from the cliff. Just listen to what sounds we woke up in our hotel. It's so cool, and the views are just amazing. This is a Roman Catholic church, the parish church of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. On that day, we decided to go to the city of Medina. Passing the city by bus, we realized that the island is beginning to be built up with more and more modern buildings, skyscrapers. And here we are look back in the Middle Ages, entrance to Medina and then some solid sites, the National Museum of National History, shops with interesting souvenirs, including those related to the popular TV show The Games of Thrones since many shots were filmed here. This is an amazing city. It very step you can find an interesting place with its own history. For example, St. Paul's Cathedral in the very center of the square. I highly recommend going to the Fontanella Tea Garden restaurant where the most delicious cake and coffee are served and the terrace offer a marvelous view. Every week each village celebrates its hour festival in honor of their saint decorating the streets in very possible a way. It's very beautiful, and yet the Maltese love fireworks, which are peculiar and loud. Don't be scared if you hear explosions. Don't miss the Medina Cathedral Museum and walk down the Medina Square. As you enter the city, pay attention to the Basilica of San Paul. and also visit the Rotunda of Mosta. 
where you can visit the underground museum from the Second World War. An interesting fact is that during the Second World War, the high explosive bomb hit the top of the church, passed through it and fell inside the church. At the moment a service was taking place, the bomb didn't explode. It can be seen in the church. The locals saw a miracle in this case and decided to save it. The day was ending and we decided to take a walk along the seafront where the Fort Ricasoli is located. This place also serves as a location for filming movies. In the final day of our trip, we went to the Interactive Science Center, which is located in the Kalkara region. Here you can find a lot of interesting things in the field of physics, chemistry, biology, geography, music and ecology. You can clearly understand how this or that mechanism works. You want to remind you that the most delicious snack in Malta is pastizi. This is very yummy. I recommend you to come to the Triton Fountain in Valletta. There are food kiosks with the most delicious pastizi and many shops around. Another convenient transport in Malta is a ferry. Boats run quite often and the price is 1.5 euros, like for a bus. We sailed from Valletta to Slima. Another wonderful place we visited is a park with cats. Very friendly and peaceful place to stay and there are homeless cats everywhere. Here they are being taken care of. Volunteers bring them food, water and cat houses to sleep in. That's all. Thanks for watching. Explore the world and learn new things. Take care. Bye.